Um, so hey, I'm Anthony again. Um, let's see. So recently I have been doing the, thing, the Rails themes thing. I'm gonna keep dropping that as much as possible, obviously. Um, but basically, you know, we have some sort of command line installer where we will we'll pull down a zip file of a theme and then we want to install it in your Rails themes or in your, in your Rails app. And so we need to like copy files to the right places, do stuff like that. So I'm thinking to myself, okay, if I'm gonna be copying files of people's like local directories, I probably want to make sure that that works correctly. So I thought, okay, you know, I, I want to make sure that I test these copies and these moves and all those other kind of things well. So. Um, you know, why might you want to test file operations in your app or generally like something that you'd use? You know, maybe, you know, oh, you typed this thing. Well, you know, really, really meant this other thing and it totally like wipes out, you know, somebody's app or something like that. So, so, um, so initially I was thinking about it was, you know, okay, I can just mock out whatever sort of file um, things that I'm trying to use. So, say I'm going to try to um, make a directory and, you know, then basically. I want to just make sure that I mock that out correctly. But I think there's some problems if you do that. Basically, you know, let's say I change this make dir to a make dir p or something, so I change the way that it actually works. It's like semantically the same, but it just changes the, the actual command that I use, then it's going gonna, it's gonna to break. So it's going to tightly couple my test to my implementation, which is kind of undesirable. And then let's say I just generally run library.add in this case. It's going to wherever I'm running this from, say a test suite or say like my integration server or something like that, then it's going to basically um, you know, run that and create a new directory somewhere, which I don't know where that's going to be. And same thing if I you know, tell it to delete a file, it might delete an actual file somewhere. So I want to make sure that I'm always mocking that out. So and I'm really focused mostly on developer testing at this point. I know you guys said you were kind of um, testers, maybe in the high, kind of higher level of like, you know, integration, maybe, I don't know. Yeah. So. But I just thought, you know, so maybe just as a clarification. But I think the principles are kind of similar as well, maybe. Um, so, so I didn't, I actually tried this for a little while, and I even kind of created my own helpers to say, like, safe file system, blah, blah, blah. And, and then I was like, okay, there's got to be a better way. So I started researching, and there's this one uh, gem out there called MockFS. Um, so basically it's a way of you, you know, you have... Things that it was, it was very similar to my second approach actually, where I was basically creating my own file create methods, where it would it would I would I would mock that and then do something else. Um, um, I was gonna try to draw it actually, like how it kind of works generally, but I don't know if there's any paper and or like th something that I can write on successfully. Could could do that. Um, I mean, I can do a piece of this. All right, yep, we got a small crowd. I like it. This will be effective. All right. Let's see. It's a fine point. Yeah. This is a live code. Yeah. All right. Just fire open photo booth, and when you get done, hold the page. Yeah, that's an option. There you go. Oh wow. This is this is like really going crazy. All right. So let's see. Just read an article about a guy at um, conferences who was using paper, the iPad app to do his presentation, so he's sketching live with the iPad connected to a projector. So this is a lo-fi version of that. The live UPS commercial? I guess. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> Point being, you're ahead of the curve. Thanks. Uh, yeah, yep, so basically, alright, so you're gonna, you're gonna use the actual, like, mock file something or other and then if it's if you're in the normal mode it's just going to go to the regular file system if you're not in the normal mode or if you're in your testing mode then it's going to go to the mock file system so that's basically how it's working it and so um, so for an example in your actual code you would write mock fs dot file utils move and then move these you know, it would basically move one file to the other um, and then so if you were testing this um, you would do something a little more complicated. This is the actual like example that they give, which I think they could have probably written a much better example. Uh, but basically, um, this is my huge mouse pointer. Um, I, I go as large as possible. I find it makes it a lot easier to find it. Um, and then, so you have this line, and so basically you're saying, okay, I want to actually mock with my mock file system. Um, so this, this is kind of a little awkward because then you have to do this. You could, could run this in like a major like setup kind of thing, like your first time you're, you know, whenever you're setting up or tearing down your tests, you could do that pretty easily. Um, fill path right here basically says I want to create a um, file, or I want to create like a, a, a directory in these, like for var log, HTTPD, 
Um, and then down here we want to say, hey, let's uh, actually put a line in this log, and and then uh, I'll run this method that I you know created up here. Um, and then I want to assert certain things like, does this file exist? Blah blah blah. Um, okay, so. I didn't end up going with this, so it is a way to mock the file system in testing, but I didn't like it because you have to actually explicitly change your production code in order to get it to work, which is really kind of awkward and it's a very like testing anti-pattern. Um, so it's also it's also very verbose, like do I really want to write mock fs.file.exist when I could just write file.exist or something like that? You know, it's a little bit more, you know, kind of crufty. Um, and this is a kind of a general issue, but you can't really like shell out, so you can't use the back ticks, or you can't use system dot whatever um, because it's not going to work because you have to you have to have these mock fs's all around. Um, so then I looked at the fake fs gem, which I was excited because it was by the defunct guy, which, who who generally is pretty good. So I was like, okay, that's probably a good sign. Um, so the description there is, you know, th this is what the description that the gem has. Um, so in our original example, we had the you know file utils that expects make dir with directory once, whereas now all we can just say is library. We call the library .add directory method, and then we assert that the directory directory is created. So um, that's how fakefs works. And you might be like, whoa, crap! Like that's awesome. How does it you know how does it work? So basically, in your testing stuff, you would do either fakefs activate and then whatever you want to do, or de and then deactivate it to undo it. Um, you can do it. You can do it in a block. I don't know. Okay, that's good. That's visible. Um, and then the way that I have done it in the Rails themes thing is basically just have a global kind of thing here. Um, uh, you can put this inside of your R spec configuration, so it just runs all the time. Um, so that's pretty good. Then you don't have to think about it, and you just know. Okay, I'm always mocking my files um, when I'm doing that. So, and the, the way that it does it is whenever you do the activate, and all, all the kind of blocks and whatnot are, you know, some sort of way of doing activate. Basically, it's just saying, okay, I want to remap the Ruby internal dir file, file test, file utils, and path name to my own fakefs dir fakefs file. And what that does is the fakefs is basically a model of what would my, you know, directory structure look like, basically. Or what, you know, say, say I do a Ruby file create. I want to model that internally, and then when you ask me, "Hey, what is the what is the what are the permissions on this file?" I'll respond with an intelligent response to say, "Okay, well, you know, usually when you make a file, it's going to be, you know, I don't know what the file permissions would be, but it can actually respond to that. It'll pretend basically pretend that there's a file out there. Um, so that's nice because you're not modifying your your actual file system; you're just doing it all in memory, basically. So, which in addition, it's pretty quick if you're doing this. Um, so it's got some speed advantages. Um, it's pretty similar, although I think the nice thing is that you're basically, you don't have to change your code, you just write how you would normally write things and then it's going to work out correctly. Um, so the example that I had here was just, uh, so basically if I'm going to try to extract an archive, if it's not there, the bottom one, then I want to exit with some sort of error. If it is there, then I want to, um, then it should work correctly, basically. The Let's see. Yeah. So I guess this, this probably isn't a good example, but um, but basically I'm just able to use file utils that touch archive, and that actually only works in memory. So it's not actually touching this file in my system. Um, so the nice thing is it's not coupled, it's not leaking testing into production code. It's pretty easy to copy from the real file system. There's a fakefs.clone where you can say, say you set up a fixtures directory where you have a bunch of like files that you know like a, maybe a whole directory structure that's got like hundreds of files, you can just say, hey, clone this this thing that I know about, and then you can actually use that to test with certain things. So, um, so it makes it pretty easy to do that. I think there might be a way to do that in mockfs, but I'm not sure. I haven't I didn't really use that. I just kind of looked at it and realized it was not very good. Um, still can't really shell out, and then there's there's probably about 30 bugs filed against it right now. A lot dealing with kind of like file globbing. So. You might have a correct implementation, and then fakefs says, "Oh, I don't know. There's not a file here." And you're like, "I just said that there's a file here. Like, why is there not a file?" And then you spend two hours figuring out what's going on, realizing it's a bug, and then just rewriting it a slightly different way that doesn't use that method. So it's kind of annoying. So, so it's got kind of pros and cons there. It's something to think about. Um, so uh, in the course of doing this, a lot of times I was kind of creating, um, you know, my own files and/or like populating them. And so there's a thing called construct out there. 
um, which basically allows you to uh, say, okay, I'm going to make a directory. It's called Alice Rabbit Hole, and then inside of there, I have a file called White Rabbit Text, which says I'm late. So then, when I read this certain file, I want to assert that it says that I'm late. So I think you could probably combine these somehow. So I think that would be something good to look into if you're interested in, you know, dynamically constructing files to test with that sort of thing. Um, let's see. So I, I think it's worth it because it's nice because if you want something to work correctly, it's it's a, it's useful to test it, especially in a you know some sort of production environment. Um, it's pretty quick to do and it makes your tests a lot faster than if you were to mount the file system, is my guess, or you know work with the file system. But um, so one other thing I was reading this like Stack Overflow post where basically someone recommended maybe there's a way you can mount a file as a file system and then test that the operations that you do on that do the things that you expect it to and then you can just delete that file when you're done. So I thought that might be an interesting like approach as like a third way to do it or a different way of doing it but I do not care to spend the time to do that. Um, but I just thought it might be something interesting. Um, so that's all I have for now. Um, do you guys, have you guys done much with the file testing? I probably should have asked this like 10 minutes ago. Um, just kind of, I, I think this is one of the first times where I really had to do it, so. Okay, cool. Yeah. Uh, we have some stuff that creates files and directories as needed, and of course we exercise that, but, yeah. you know. It's not actually mocking up the file system. It actually does it in the file system. Right. And I, you know, I generally it run it. It is slow. You do see it slow down when it hits those parts. Yeah. I generally, like, you know, try to run it end to end also and just make sure does it actually install the things correctly and not overwrite something. But, uh, you know, it's good to have that as kind of like a integration or like a continuous integration kind of piece, right? So. Uh, so aside, from, aside from the speed kind of bit, um, primary reason you would mock this out of because you don't want to touch the is, is I wonder if there's other ways to uh, like redirect to another area of the file system sure yeah that might be that might be a good way of doing it I mean or, you know you have basically a separate you know file directory structure and or like partition or something like that where you just say okay instead of writing to this one I'm gonna write to this other one could be a way to do it um, I like the mocking files for one I've got word before is um, when you say you, you're mocking and you're expecting something to work up a file, mm -hmm. and then you don't have uh, access to it, you don't have permissions to it. Um, that was, uh, the, I mean, it was something that was going by before. So essentially, yeah. what, what the, the best, so if you don't like test what you're writing to a directory, um, unless you actually write to the directory, like touch yeah. and write to the directory. You don't know for sure. Right. You're like, well, all my all my tests pass, it must work, right? Kind of thing. But in reality you didn't check for this one case or you know, do I actually have permissions to this thing? That's a good point. So all right, cool, that's all I got really. So awesome. Thank you. Yep.